are indicative of pretty long histories of animals living in this area and on some of these features you can see where the currents are probably strongest over time because the they're more? all yeah. focused on the there's the uh, points uh, of the rocks. James was saying there's some overhangs here. We might be able to see them coming a little bit. Okay. So That's it good. really tells Funny. it really tells you a lot about kind of where organisms value lands uh, real estate on this landscape. And right at the the points where you might have currents that would accelerate around parts of rocks that maybe jut out into the water column a little bit. Uh, Steve, what's your what's your preferred speed through here? Are we trying to move through here? Are we trying to like just look around? The expeditiously, so the fastest you're comfortable with. Okay, sounds great. Victor Gorgia? Yeah. And mushroom corals, Anthemastus. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I am gonna start trucking upwards then. So Steve, you said earlier that the peak is going to be 1,300 meters, about? 1,335, yeah. Okay. And um, by the time we get to the top of the slope, we should be in the 1550s. Nice. Yep. So again, all of our online viewers, we are exploring a, a seamount. Well, there is some pretty cool stuff I can see in a big mushroom coral outcrop on the left-hand side. Yeah. Where was that? Uh, directly ahead of you. Uh, I see, can see it really well in the um, uh, triclops, really well. Oh, I, yeah. What are, oh, the, the oh, colony? The field. The, the field of them. Okay, I'll get up there. I was oh, looking wow. for one giant one. Yeah, this, is, well. this is one <laughs> of the highest densities wow. I've ever seen. Wow, it's actually an overhang. Yes. Ah, that's spicy. That's why. They're just telling you, come here, come here. The siren call. They're trying to entice you into the overhang. Don't go towards the rocks. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overhangs and cables don't 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 mix very well. Mm. Correct. Although there's there's some there was an Aridogorgia um, species right in front of the lasers, so that that might be actually a new uh, oh, yeah. yeah record. I, I'm I'm just gonna make like verbal uh, notes. Yeah, we don't have to zoom in on everything. Just you don't want to zoom. You just want to keep moving. Yeah, it's it's pretty okay. apparent that that's a, a different species of Aridogorgia than we've been seeing so far. So that would be um, Bella Aridogorgia Bella because of the tighter helix. Um, uh, in the in the axis of the colony, so that's one of the characteristics we use to distinguish certain species, at least from a distance. And they do have overlapping depth ranges, Magnus borealis and Bella, but um, generally Bella is a little bit shallower. But as I expect, um, you know, we're going to be coming up pretty quickly. Mm. By the time we reach the top of this ridge, we'll probably be seeing entirely different faunal communities. Uh, I was about to ask you that. Yeah, it, yeah. it looks I'm like you've come in, but we've come you're in. getting pulled. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. getting pulled. Okay, what gives you the, the sense that we might be seeing entirely different faunal communities when we get to the... Yeah, yeah, different different species of corals, different uh, species there. of sponges, okay. maybe oh, two, four, five. Uh, fish. Uh, things like fish. that. Fish. Ah, fish. Okay. I like fish. I did some work uh, a bit further south from here in the Phoenix Archipelago, and we found that 1,500 meters seems to be a pretty important biogeographic boundary because it's a it's a major water mass boundary in the Central Pacific as well. So Steve, I'm looking at the uh, oxygen concentration right now in Hercules. Is that kind of related to the water uh, mass flux? Uh, water in mass some balance? ways, yeah. In some ways. Why would it uh, lower as we increase in? Uh, generally, the, de the deeper water masses um, 
Uh, so there's a few things that could be going on. The deeper water masses can sometimes be more well oxygenated and sometimes they're less well oxygenated depending on where they're located and when the um, those yes. bodies of water, those parcels of water were last um, in contact with the surface and kind of uh, exchanging gases with What's the surface that? ocean. Uh, so as we go, shall let me take a look see at the oxygen. Oh, I'm not even looking at them. So we're pretty stable. Oxygen's decreasing a little bit. I mean, yeah, not markedly so, but uh, 72. That's, that is pretty low. So we would probably be entering like the, the upper portion of Pacific uh, deep yeah, water out here, hold. Um, no. which is an older um, water mass. If you think about it, when it's last had contact with the, the sea surface and is able to exchange gases, it, generally Pacific deep water is a very um, like it wanders CO2 a lot. Every time we well. get less than four beams, you're going to start Imagine seeing the, uh, it uh, water current faster. plays a role right. in that as yeah. well, right? The deep yeah. water, water, deep water current. The most well oxygenated deep waters are either in the Antarctic or in the North Atlantic. Um, sure. Yeah. It takes several thousand years for you know a parcel of water to go through the entire <coughs> thermohaline circulation. Oh yeah, if I get too far away, the current is quite strong. I want to stay close. Somebody is wondering how long does it take to get the ROV to the bottom. So again, this is our fourth dive of this cruise, and this happens to be the shallowest dive that we've taken so far. So the maximum depth that we went down to was 2,000 meters. Um, I'm not sure how long it took to get to that depth this, di this time around, but my guess would be probably about an hour, hour and 15 maybe. Yeah, a little bit over an hour. That's pretty good, I guess. All right. Uh, you want another stop, Gary? Yeah, I do. Yeah, do it's uh, just just ending. What's that? It's just ending now. But yeah, keep going. Okay, bridge now. Can we do another stop? One zero meters, two four five. So even though this is one of our shallower dives, it's still quite deep. So in terms of feet, it is 6,561. And if anybody uses miles, it is 1.24 miles down below. Doing some quick math over there. Uh, Google. <laughs> Google is doing some quick math. Dr. Google. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Google. Google. It knows all, most of the time. Nick, somebody is wondering, do you ever find precious metals in your rock samples? That's a good question. In these samples, not so much. Uh, we'll find... Um, some precious metals near hydrothermal vents often. Uh, you can find some uh, uh, copper pyrite uh, deposits, chalcopyrite deposits uh, out here. Um, not so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. I suppose there's some uh, economic interest in the uh, ferromanganese crust, which can also incorporate some, not precious mineral minerals, but uh, Critical sort of elements. Waiting to be able to get closer. Cobalt, yeah. nickel, and rare earth elements used it's, for uh, it's starting to fall electronics away a bit. and uh, electric vehicles and other things like that. And that can be found in the ferro like, um, manganese. The slope's starting to fall away a crust? Bit. Okay. Yes. One oh. more? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, a lot of metals in that crust. Where are, where are we this at? One? How but much not is precious? Well, depends on what you consider precious. This one's yeah, anything. I guess. Maybe let Atalanta settle. Yeah, that's fine. 
Yeah, so we are using two ROVs yeah, so to conduct these dives. The main ROV is yeah, I think the I'm really ROV now. Hercules. Okay. Hold on, boss. Uh, I think we're, yeah, I think it stopped. Okay, sure. Yeah, that's, oh, a trip. Trip. that's a good shrimp. I mean, I have trip. to be about 10 meters. I'm 10 meters from the, on it. from the face right now. So yeah, yeah 10 more for sure. Bridge now. Uh, one zero meter is two four five. So as I was saying, we are using two ROVs for these dives. Hercules is the main one. <clears throat> so that's how you're able to see live this video feed of what the depths look like at 2,000 meters. And then in addition to Hercules, there is Atalanta. So Atalanta is above Hercules by about 30 meters. You can see that in the satellite feed or channel two. And it, uh, Atalanta is helpful to kind of get a view of where Hercules is in the space. So people oftentimes wonder how large is Hercules? How large are these ROVs? Uh, Hercules, we've been saying, is about the size of a USPS mail truck, or Gabby likes to say an Escalade, around that, that size. And Atalanta is much smaller, I would say maybe the size of a office desk? Yeah. Like a, maybe a, a, a good sized office desk? A heavy office desk. Yeah? Yeah, a heavy one. A, a very heavy. Very heavy, right? <laughs> <laughs> very heavy, very heavy. One, one of the old, <laughs> very you know, metal. Metal, yeah. <laughs> Retro. Cold, Cold War era. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm doing my best over here. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I, I, I wouldn't say that to Atalanta's face. But. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say about Atalanta? The size of a heavy office desk. <laughs> Oh, compared to the man. Cold War the Escalade. Built like a 1950s office Brutal. desk. For <laughs> uh, office desk. Which actually does suit the ship, I mean. Yeah, Atlas was built in 1967 That's true. in East Germany. So. Okay, uh, so what do we think? you can keep the moves coming. I think it's falling away. Raj, bridge, Nav. We can add another one zero meters, 245. So slope's moderating a little bit. That allows us to maybe push in a little bit more and see more of the bottom, right? I said it's to? moderating, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just changed its mind. Is moderating yeah. like mature? <laughs> like mature, mat Maturing? <laughs> yeah, like maturing. <laughs> yeah, this is not so... Not so moderate. Yeah, not so moderate. It's coming and going, it looks like. Can you point to me where we are in the map there? Uh, it should be, it should be moderating. Right. Yeah. Bathy says it's moderating. But, trust but verify. Yeah. Trust but ground truth. Yeah. Which is what we're doing. Come closer, Atalanta. Come closer. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I really did get blown off here. That's interesting. Yeah, I know. That's so strange. That's kind of why I think, like, why you think that working our way along the side of this is just going to be such yeah. a frustrating exercise. Yeah. Uh, we got three meters left. Beautiful. Do you have enough tether? Uh, do you want to see where Atalanta's settles out. Yeah, we always have to do the Because it's getting to that like magical like 20 meter mark there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm okay. going to start coming up again. Now that we can see 
the face here. Yeah, so if anybody at home is wondering, um, again, Atalanta and Hercules are tethered. So Hercules is 30 meters below Atalanta, and Atalanta is tethered to the ship. So in order for Hercules to go, Atalanta also needs to go. I think we're just trying to figure out the situation going on with the currents to make sure that everything is working together in a happy, in a happy way. Um, yeah, so we're going to stay here on the bottom. I believe our expected uh, dive time is about 16 hours. That's a little bit shorter than what we have been doing so far this cruise, but still a very, very long time. The current is pushing me down now. I'm not going up very fast. Interesting. Yeah. I think we're going to need another um, move, too. So we're not. Okay, does it seem like Atalanta's Dragon. stationary there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Bridge now. Uh, one zero meters, 245. Sorry, I'm pulling you around. That's all right. Actually, what if we do a, I mean, we could also try changing our angle to like 220. Um, sh would that help at all? That would help us get to a point six. Um, I think it's going to be easier to see things coming, like just going straight up the strike. Okay. Uh, we don't have too much more to go of this, right? No. Steve, is that, does that work for you if we kind of go straight up to where it levels off and then we'll come down to waypoint? Yeah, I would say whatever's, mo whatever's fastest. Okay. Is, yeah. Yes, yeah, so if we go straight up it, then we'll be at the top. And yeah. then once we're there, we can and, go um, quickly. Let me see. And now we're getting the current coming straight, straight at us, right? A little to the port. I'm sorry. Now we're having current come straight at us from the port. Yeah. Side. I'm just, I'm struggling to make any headway right now. Shout out to Dan Man watching. Thank you so much for sticking with us for so long. Um, you're wondering what is our current, what is the favorite thing we've seen in this current dive? So again, this is the four to eight crew. Uh, we just came on about 30 minutes ago. Um, we've seen some really amazing coral so far, uh, but in this dive in general, this is a fourth dive of NA-153. Yeah, can't keep heading. Neither can I. Uh, yeah, I'm pulling on you. Okay. Um, Neither? Just to try and get to a... So you're going to go tail to tail right now. Okay. Uh, just take a... Yeah, just take an opposite heading. Uh, I'll just keep... Link um, 090 or something like that. Okay. Yeah, we just keep moving then. Keep adding that to moving. Ship moving. Um... What's your direction of travel right now? Oh, you got it back. Beautiful. Well, it's I'm going to come up. I'm going to see if I can start coming up again here. OK. Um, the ship is stopped. I can't, yeah, let the ship be stopped. I can't okay. come up okay. really right now. I have to turn off. I can't do, if I'm going to go vertical at all, I need to not touch any other thrusters. Mm. Brad.
So back to Dan's question really quick. Um, I would say that probably one of the highlights we've seen is a baby Chana Cops. Um, everybody on the team was kind of freaking out about that one. Yeah, I imagine we're just like cresting something here. And so it's... Current's coming like, over the top. Yeah. yeah. That would check out with the bathy as well. We're getting some questions about all that white stuff. So um, yeah, those white particles that you can see in the water column, that's something that's called marine snow. It's quite different than snow that we have here on land. Um, it's made up of debris, basically, like tiny, tiny particles of scales, uh, dead, dead skin cell cells. I always struggle with saying that. Maybe I should just stop it. Um, Bacteria, plankton, teeny tiny particles like that, that make their way eventually to the bottom, right the seafloor. And it does take years sometimes for those particles to make it all the way down here. So somebody also has said it's uh, kind of like ocean dandruff. <laughs> so if you want to think about it that way, feel free to do so. I'd rather not. <laughs> Check my arms when you said that. Especially, be itchy in here. Especially because that's the primary food source for most things down here. Mm. <laughs> Are we still going down in oxygen concentration? Just curious. Uh, we had a little dip uh, going up to about 70%. Not too long ago, but it was a steady drop for a while. It should bottom somewhere uh, actually close to land. We were like a thousand meters depth, mm. uh, so it will continue to decline. But I mean, generally these are not limiting oxygen concentrations. Sure. You don't really have those types of issues until you get closer to twenty or thirty micromolar. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Maybe what, what no. you would consider anoxic? That is the. Yeah, so no, not anoxic. Um, oxygen minimum zones, you know, uh, that occur on the margins, eastern margins. Uh, uh, oceans are are defined as either under, well, th there's some variability in the literature, but 22.5 or 20 micromoles per liter is the official definition of uh, an right. oxygen minimum zone. Mm. I think I have some more control now. I can use more than one. Um, uh, but anoxic, yeah, would be probably Great. under under five uh, or, okay. or closer to like. I, th I think we could do another move too. With uh, all the detectable uh, limits, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can come up I don't know. a little. Okay, Summer I'm gonna maybe. start coming up again. Okay, okay. let's do that. Uh, Karen, sounds good. We have visited sites off of California before where the oxygen was so low it was was within the you know the error range for the detectable limits. Wow. Oh. Oh yeah, Sonar says no move. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It's weird. No, it does. So I'm assuming when the oxygen levels get that low, there's very little life, right? Not necessarily. Yeah. There are some really, really nice uh, low oxygen tolerant animals. Some like extremophiles that live near vents, maybe? Yeah, I mean, the, if there's a niche that an animal can fill, it, it will hey. fill it. Um, it also depends on the, the variability of the oxygen over time. Um, some species actually use oxygen minima to hide themselves from predators. Interesting. Um, yeah, so if, if you are a um, prey item, like a, a animal like a, a shrimp or a, a, a smaller fish, for example, they might hide in low oxygen zones because they're not going to be predated upon by the larger oh. predators that have larger muscle masses that require uh, larger oxygen yeah. demand for their tissues. Uh, uh, yeah. And so they'll often be excluded. That's been uh, documented before. Sure. But for the benthic shrimp. fauna, um, yeah, the, for the benthic fauna, it's a little bit more, more of a dependent on the variability of the oxygen throughout maybe a season or a year. Um, because they may be low oxygen tolerant for, for parts of the year, but if there's, you know, bathed 
you know, the sites, those depths are bathed by oxygenated waters. Other times of the year, they may be able to persist. Yeah. And it depends, yeah. I, I did a little bit of my dissertation work on, um, and we have a paper coming out uh, pretty soon about the distribution of deep water corals in the oxygen minimum zones on seamounts off of Costa Rica. Wow. Yeah. Without giving too much uh, of the results away, there, there are some really interesting uh, relationships between certain species and the oxygen minimum zone, and uh, those were kind of the, the, the broad uh, ideas and findings we wanted to identify, you know, where are the boundaries for certain species. We will wait with bated breath as yeah. we... <laughs> Maybe I can give a talk about it. Yeah, someday. You have to give your... your uh, you still owe us a song. A song? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that's, for, that's on the way back. That's Okay. Maybe the talk afterwards, then. It's only worth singing if, uh, yeah, if uh, we accomplish the mission here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, so we're getting somebody in the chat that's surprised we're going to be 16 hours on the bottom. Yep. Um, again, that's kind of a that's a little bit of a shorter dive than we have been doing so far this cruise. And what is it we're looking for? Anything specific or cursory exploration or both? So it is a little bit of both. Um, well, okay. Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, is this one also... This one looks, this uh, seamount looks like it does have a name, but it has never been explored with an ROV before. Is that correct? Um, neither. Uh, this is a, the trifecta. This has never been mapped until just yesterday okay. or last night. Um, it's never been dove and it doesn't have a name. Um, we designated this site uh, with input from our scientific community ashore as a high priority exploration target. Um, because of the potential shallow summit depth uh, that we observed from the sat satellite altimetry data that had existed for this area. So we mapped it and we found that it was shallower than most of the seamounts in the surrounding area, but uh, not as shallow as anticipated. And uh, this site uh, we're calling ABNJ or Area Beyond National Jurisdiction because it's outside of the USCEZ surrounding Johnson Atoll. And uh, so that puts it firmly in the area beyond which nations uh, control um, and uh, an area that's often referred to as the area um, by the international community. And the area is a definition um, that the uh, UN law of the sea, of the UN law of, sea uh, law of the sea convention, as well as um, the International Seabed Authority use uh, to define um, deep seabed areas outside of national boundaries. And so this site um, provides a really interesting comparison biologically and geologically because uh, it's not clear uh, how this site might relate to some of the geo uh, geological origins of seamount chains within, within Johnston Atoll and then as well as the biological communities that might exist here and if there are any differences between here and the communities within Johnston Atoll. Generally animals don't really care about boundaries very much. They're not really boundary animals. Uh, so they occur across the ocean and uh, humans tend to put boundaries in where, um, where, where it's legally defined. And so from what I can see here, a lot of the animal species are very similar to ones we found in parts of Johnson Atoll. And from a population uh, ecology perspective, population genetic perspective, these sites might be uh, potential uh, source or, or sink populations for you know, animals that might be dispersal um, dispersing larvae from either within or outside of Johnson Atoll. So it's, um, it's important to understand what's out here too, because it, ecologically it could impact what's within the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. Um. Yeah, and one of the uh, interesting geomorphic uh, geological uh, aspects of this seamount is uh, 
Repair Mercia. There might be some evidence for uh, some secondary volcanism that occurred after the seamount uh, formed with these little parasitic cones uh, that are evident from the bathymetry, bathymetry data. So we're interested in on possibly sampling some of those areas if possible as well. Yep. What is a parasitic cone? So, or yeah, cone? A parasitic cone is uh, just a volcanic uh, expression of a uh, secondary event after a primary eruption. Uh, so think of it as uh, leftovers. Leftover uh, lava? Leftover lava that uh, is, is kind of being squeezed out at the very end. And it has a very distinct alkalic uh, chemical signature, oh. usually. Um, and uh, it's, 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 a, it's a very interesting um, um, geomorphic feature to look at. Neat. So we're getting some closer images of the seafloor now. Um, some really cool stuff here. There's a small stoloniferous octocoral right there. I'm not going to circle it because I don't want I don't want to stop the forward movement. Um, the little stoloniferous octocoral in the rock. We collected one a bit earlier, and I was really excited about that because they're very poorly known. They only exist on rocky or other um, surfaces that already exist in the environment. They can't make their own stalk or skeleton. Um, Looks like also we have some fairly large uh, pillow basalts. Yeah. Very big boulders. Somebody saying they thought I was going to say sub-aerial when I was talking about the dandruff. We were waiting for it. Yeah, I physically had to stop myself, but the crowd was waiting. They knew. <laughs> They've been paying attention to our <laughs> antics. <laughs> are these rocks or any idea how old they might be Nick that's a very good question that's one of the reasons we're here um, this is an unexplored seamount so we won't know uh, the age of the seamount or the rocks that formed from it uh, until we get to run some chemical analysis and uh, isotope geochemistry uh, but there are some prevailing hypotheses uh, including multiple hotspot tracks that kind of uh, go through the Johnston Atoll area, and they range from 70 million years to to higher, maybe even 100 million years. All right. So okay. very old rocks. That's old. But surprisingly young, with when compared to some uh, rocks you'll find. Yeah, that is. On the so I love it. Uh, That's awesome. Are we in a a good place to? Uh, Ask for sampling in the near future. Uh, ship has stopped. Ship has stopped, yeah, sweet. Adelaide should be close to being stopped. Absolutely. Good All to right. know. I'm going to turn it over to Nick, who's going to lead us on a rock search. Sweet. All right. Uh, rock search. Nothing uh, is jumping out at me currently, <laughs> of course. <laughs> We're uh, taking it back uh, from Nick. Unless we can take one of those right. enormous rocks. Um, which, uh, well, I thought I think it's down to the lower left there was some pretty angular stuff a minute yeah. ago. You want to circle for me? Yeah. So what are you talking about? Yeah down Over to the lower here. left yeah. there. There's a great talus field earlier that this uh, stuff kind of looks yeah, interesting. Yeah, that actually looks like it might be good. If it's too flat, then we're going to go ahead and pass on I, it, though. I, I, uh, can yeah. I pick one? <laughs> yep, can I do something Steve's useful? Rock. <laughs> you want me to go right in I there? have a good feeling. Yeah. Can you put... Oh, we'll give, no, we'll you give Steve a rock here. Beautiful. Okay. Rock looks good to me. I, I see these uh, busted open pillow lavas, and I figure probably some good stuff there yeah could be attached though won't know until we try so somebody's asking are we taking these to the surface to cut open to the answer is yes um, so these rocks are collected brought up um, on the RV unloaded on the ship circle it again. And we do have a rock cutter. Right that one right there. That one? Okay. 
we do have a rock cutter on board, and so um, they get cut, examined. I was able to cut one, yes, was that yesterday? Okay, this I is going to have to be a quick one. The day before yesterday. Okay. Okay. It was fun. Yeah, because uh, we yeah, still got to swing on Thank it. Thank you. That's why if I get the downloads on. Saw, uh, uh, yeah, I was saw. just about to do that. Yeah, go for it. No worries. Uh, craft. And craft. So after you cut the rocks, um, when you get a chance, if you can tell us, what do you do afterwards? What are the next steps? Uh, yeah, so uh, there's... Uh, multiple steps involved when it comes to dating rock. It takes at least a couple of months. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll send it off to a, a laboratory Oop, for uh, petrographic slides. Uh, so that's just a very thin section that we can look under a microscope and determine uh, modal abundances of any possible uh, minerals that are datable. Where do you guys want this one? In starboard bow box, either C, D, or F. It depends on the size. Looks okay. like it's stuck in there, huh? Yeah, it does feel pretty solid. But okay, then we should probably head out because we have um, a train to catch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Good old okay. deep sea train. Uh, oh, 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 that one moved. Okay. Right where the claw is. Uh, then grab it and yeah. we should go. Grab and go. Grab and yeah. go. Um, we, we won't like move it, as fast with the arm running, but, uh... Actually, you might be able to see oh. on the bottom Is of it. Is it already eroded if away? anything. What do you think? Oh, not bad. Get a okay. Um, we should probably get Grab going. Because go. I'm not yep. quite sure how fast um, Hercules will come up right now. Okay. Looks Are nice you going to just hold it and put it in a box later? Yep, we're going to yep. put it in the box later. Okay. Coming up. Let the record show that is not the rock I picked. <laughs> yeah, well, so I don't want to be responsible for okay. what if bad, that's the best yeah, rock. Yeah, I know. What if it's full syndrome. of treasure? I mean, that's okay. It's <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> so, uh, can you come up with best rock? Yes. Yeah. So, I tell uh, you, the animals yeah, know the best rocks. Uh, they don't move. Yep. That's why they're the best rocks. <laughs> oh, the vehicle's acting great right now. I did pick the rock so that had the glass button. Speaking button. of treasure, yeah. we have. I was gonna say, Smith has picked some pretty great rocks. Yeah, we have Thank Emmett. You. Hi, Emmett. We're wondering if we've ever found any treasures in the dives. Depends on who you ask. I know. Uh, every dive is full of biological treasures. Biological treasures. I know that. Uh, was it a couple of years ago? We found a megalodon tooth a fossilized megalodon tooth in this uh, Johnson Atoll region. So maybe not shiny treasure, but I think it's really cool. Maybe we let's try and go and C or D with those. Okay, vehicle's acting awesome right now. Way better. So yeah, getting back to your earlier question, uh, after we look at those petrographic slides, the way we uh, date rocks, no, no, we it really is. a long, it's arduous uh, process of grinding, like crushing, uh, sieving uh, the rock. And then after we're done with yeah, that, yeah. then we're going to wash no, it in that. water, in uh, pure water. Nope. Let it dry that. overnight. Uh, and then put it through a Franz magnetic separator to kind of uh, separate all the nasty ground mass. Uh, then we need to clean out any type of clay minerals in there. So we'll acid leach it with uh, hydrochloric and nitric acid. And uh, once we've done that, then we'll go ahead and pick um, mineral species individually under a microscope with tweezers, which is my favorite part. Really? Not at all. <laughs> uh, and once we've collected that, then we pack them up in uh, little tubes and send them off to a nuclear reactor to be ir irradiated. Uh, and that way we can convert um, potassium to argon uh, to do the argon-argon dating uh, technique. and then. When we uh, get those samples back, then we run them through a mass spectrometer, and we get a nice little J-curve that will hopefully give us a 50% uh, cumulative uh, age plateau, which is uh, basically the required um, accepted standard for, um, for, uh, for an age. You have to have so, so much argon. So many release. steps. Yeah. How long does the tweezer thing take? Um, for one sample, it can take up to eight hours. 
depending on oh my goodness. I'm trying to figure out if I would like that or not. I like like doing tiny little things. I don't know why, but you I know, like... You know, if, if you put on a podcast or something, yeah. you know, put on some headphones, it's not terrible. Kind of relaxing. Yeah, but when you have a, you know, eight samples to do or ten samples. Ooh, or never mind. You're doing that for eight hours. Or two, it's kind of like doing a puzzle on Nautilus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah, it's about the same time frame. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of puzzles in our downtime, for those of you who might be wondering. I think we're on our fifth one. Getting them done. So what we're seeing here are a lot of, you know, a lot of these small uh, coral bases, and kind of these brown, uh, whitish brown splotches on the rock are old uh, attachment points for corals or maybe sponges, but there's still, you know, still a good amount of live material here. Bamboo corals, Victorborgia colonies. Um, some paramercyids. Uh, a lot of the purple colonies, Victor Gorgia here. We kind of moved into their depth range from below. Uh, we didn't see any at the start of the dive and they start popping at maybe 17 or yeah, 1700 meters or so. Looks really nice. Yeah. It doesn't look too crusty either. It looks, I don't want to say fresh, but you can say fresh. Yeah, fresh. That's what we, that's what we'll say in the lab. We'll call them fresh basalts, even though they may be tens of millions years old. Oh, Dumbo. Oh, oh wait. Oh. Dumbo on the left. Yo. Dumbo no on the left. No way. Yes. Dumbo alert. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, the, the rock gets to see a Dumbo. <laughs> oh, I'm so stoked. The ship has stopped. It's on the gr it's on the uh, sea floor too, which makes it easy wow. to get a good Look image. Look at that darling oh. thing. Yep. These are Dumbo uh, Dumbo octopods, kind of an informal name uh, for the Siri octopods. This wow. One. Ah. you caught a glimpse of it just a few seconds. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. goes. So kind of tell why cute. they're called Dumbo. You know. <laughs> it swims with its ears. These modified uh, fins oh. that allow them to move through the water. Oh my gosh. I'm like pinching myself. I can't believe we're finally seeing Some of one. the diagnostic features, yeah, we use for these are the number of rows of um, suction discs on their tentacles, if there are any modified tentacles. There's not a lot we can see um, from here, but uh, we've had really good success having some of these identified uh, by our shoreside team. Can I go a bit more, Debbie? Can I go lasers off and do some uh, images? Yeah, let's yes. I know Get that I probably want to get some highlights of this. Yeah. It's dinner time, but we're not leaving the van. Yep. Nope. <laughs> you cannot remove me from this seat right now. <laughs> I'm not, staying. Not even for ice cream. Not for ice cream. Nope. It's not Sunday. It's yeah, a Jumbo us. octopus. Not for a Dumbo. Beautiful. Maybe for ice cream. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> On second thought. <laughs> Steve, do we have a species ID? Uh... You know, I'll try and, f uh, species, I don't think so, uh, but we can probably try and find a genus on this. Yeah. It's it, it's one of the more, I would say it's probably one of the more common ones mm -hmm. we've seen. Um, like Grimpatuthus? Like Grimpatuthus, yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. It looks sleepy. Or like it's yeah, giving us a side eye or something. I am feeling some sass, I'm not gonna lie. A little sassy. Yeah. <laughs> Sassy octopus. <laughs> Can these That's fair. Octopus change color, or is that unnecessary because they're in the like no light zone? Um, I I don't think they. I've never off. I've never seen them change color. Because um, we saw the one was yellow, and this one's very pink. Yeah, as far as I know, oh. they don't have the same specialized. Oh, it's swimming. So. 
That's amazing. All right. I think if we've got enough images, we can probably move on here. Do we? Probably spend all day. Do you, do you ever? Do we, Steve? <laughs> well, look at him swim. Look at him swim. Oh. <laughs> so, Steve, do we think the yellow one was probably a different uh, species then? The yellow okay. one. By the uh, oh, so was this special. another dive? I'm not familiar with yeah, it. Yeah, uh, I think it's on one of the highlights. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I must not have. Well, that made my day. Yeah. Happy if I turn the lasers back on. Happy if I turn the lasers back on. Yeah, so our uh, friends in the chat are wondering, uh, what is a Dumbo octopod? So we just saw a really, really excellent example of what one of those was. Um, I believe there Rock are different the kinds of Dumbo octopi. It's You're too late. late. Science, where are we putting oh. this rock again? Oh, yeah, the rock. Charlie or Delta hey. on the starboard side? <laughs> Charlie <laughs> or Delta. One of the last, one of the aft two. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'll get you the right camera here. So it is not a jelly. It's not a jellyfish or a sea jelly. They don't have any stingers. Um, they do have tentacles, like jellies do. Come around. Orange. Oh yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't see that one. It, yeah, orange is not a common color. It could have just, yeah. So it could be. I mean, it, it's it's a morphological difference. It's, you know, color is. I don't. I wouldn't say is all that reliably diagnostic. Um. So there's big one. The two. One of the two yeah. small ones in the back. Okay. I don't believe they can. Of oh, the rock. Sorry. You were waiting for. So that went in uh, Charlie. Yes. <laughs> A lot of these. I'm getting some really nice shots of this um, triclops of some of these bases, these coral bases Jeez. on the rock. They're Manganese crusted, few, few few millimeters at least suggest they've been around for a long time. So there's a long history of life on this sea mount. Bonk. That changed the bias there. I saw a Dumbo octopus today. Oh, are you talking about that for a week? Yeah, okay. Um, I haven't readjusted the trim, so it's a little bit. So our uh, team is switching out just for a few minutes. It is dinner time here on the ship. So you might be hearing some different voices. Rewind. <laughs> here comes Michael on K-O-E-T. So we had a, we had a uh, dumb, we had a dumb no. uh, <laughs> Oh, he's gone. Can you have three zero meter, three zero meters, one nine zero, please. Thank you. So we have some friends in the chat wondering, Nicholas, um, how do you choose uh, one so rock over the other? More west um, to four zero. Well, uh, ideally we choose but as we're many up rocks the slope as now, possible. So we're going to start um, heading more south toward waypoint six. Uh, you know, first it has to be a loose rock. Um, that's the number one thing. Um, we're looking for something that's relatively fresh, which means it doesn't have a lot of ferromanganese crust on it. It doesn't have a lot of alteration, which we uh, really can't tell until we cut the rock open. So uh, 
at the end of the day, it becomes a numbers game where we like to collect as many as we can. But uh, so far on NA-153, I think we have a fairly successful rate of uh, potential rocks that we can make uh, ages on. Thank you. Sure. And uh, people are still wondering about that Dumbo octopus. Uh, they're wondering, could the color of the Dumbo octopus depend upon what it eats? Because, yeah, I do believe that we've seen some that are kind of more yellow, like a light orange, and that one definitely seems like a... Like a pinkish, like yeah. a very, very light, translucent pink. Yeah. Maybe. So I mean, they're, they're macroinvertivores, so they're going to eat, um, you know, small, soft-bodied animals. Uh, like worms and perhaps other sediment dwelling in fauna. Uh, so unclear um, what they're specifically eating at this site and if it differs from other nearby you know, sites where we might find them. So the different colorations that we might see could be genetic or maybe just um environmental we're unclear as to what causes those different colors as of now yeah pigments are just really unreliable it's hard to tell um, in the deep sea if if pigments mean anything other than perhaps uh, you know displaying colors that have a uh, um, attenuation rapid attenu attenuation in depth like red uh, and this you know, warmer colors may help camouflage certain in certain species. Moving right past you. So that's, it's an interesting thing to note. There's pretty strong current coming from kind of downslope. Yeah, from from the or from from uh, going downslope from the. It's pretty much been consistent that way as well since uh, at least the start of the four o'clock four watch. Now, can we uh, uh, tilt or <laughs> yeah, tilt? Can we pan over uh, on the high pack a little bit and see sure. a bit further south? Yeah. So we're, we're going to be running this uh, ridge from waypoint six. Can you, can you, do, can you, is it possible to get waypoint seven in there? Yeah, OK. So th there's no particular need to go through the point at waypoint six uh, as we crest this ridge. So we kind of aim just to keep trucking through towards waypoint seven once the slope moderates a little bit. OK, sounds good. I thought you were talking to me there for a second. I was a little confused because south takes us off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Once, <laughs> once, it, once it moderates uh, and we reach the ridge, uh, south and south and west. So if I, if I may, I just wanted to say hi to my daughter, Zoe, and my son, Theo. I think they're watching right now. Hi, Zoe and Theo. Yeah, hi, Zoe Love you guys. Mm -hmm. And my wife. <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> hi, wife. Kate. <laughs> hi, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You want to zoom in there? Wow. wow. Nice. Uh, I thought there was a squat lobs or something Repurposed, there. yeah. Or some is that a basket star? It is, yeah. We've got some repurposed real estate here on this old bamboo coral. Hi got some hydroids. hydroids. Yeah. Uh, basket star, an actinoscyphia anemone, and then a uh, crinoid a feather star up top. Is that actinoscythia, you said? Yeah. 
Yeah. Basket stars are pretty amazing. Yeah. They're uh, brittle stars, like uh, they belong to the group, the same group as brittle stars, Ophiuroidea, but they have these many uh, kind of articulated uh, and, and, and branching uh, arms. So that basket star seems to not be curled up the way I would expect it to be. Is it? Uh, it could be. So they're feeding? planktivorous, yeah. So they could be f feeding, trying to catch things in the plankton. I and guess. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. If, if you've sat here for long enough, you'll see. Um, maybe it start to retract some of those tentacles as it catches prey. I was just going to say that most of the basket stars I've seen have been in the photic zone, so they mainly feed at night. Mm -hmm. But I guess down here it's nighttime most of the time. <laughs> Always nighttime. Yeah, very nice. Okay. You come wide, please. Yeah, some people online might be wondering, what are we using those lasers for? Um, that's to help us measure the size of whatever we're looking at. So they, those, les those lasers are spaced 10 centimeters apart. So just to give us a general idea of how big are the rocks, how big are the coral, the sponges, whatever we're seeing. And somebody was asking about, have we ever I thought we were trying to cut things in half. To the Mariana Trench? <laughs> mm, no. yeah, Didn't work. Uh, um, the deepest that this ROV that we're using tonight, um, Hercules, the deepest Hercules can go is 4,000 meters. Yep. Whereas the Mariana Trench is uh, 10,935 meters. That is toward cliff, though, so I can't just go there. That would be really cool to explore that area. But. And hi, Rosemary. Thanks for joining. So if any of you are just joining online, um, just kind of some updates. My name is Brittany. I'm a science communication fellow here on the EV Nautilus. I am visiting from the California Science Center in Los Angeles. Woot. Los Angeles. <laughs> Woot. Oh yeah, Michael, you're in here. Holla. Woot. <laughs> Um, at the Science Center, I am a senior educator uh, doing all kinds of things, uh, talking to the general public about all kinds of science topics, doing really, really fun activities, getting the public engaged. I'm super, super excited to be here. Uh, so this is our fourth dive of NA-153. We are exploring a sea mount, or basically an underwater mountain. And this is one of the shallower dives that we've done so far. Our maximum depth was 2,000 meters, and currently we are at 1,561 meters. So all things considered, we are a bit shallow compared to where we have been. And again, this total dive time is estimated to be about 16 hours long, so a little bit shorter than what we've done so far on this cruise. So I'm just doing a quick mic check. Do I sound quiet to everyone else, or is no, it? No, I think you sound okay to me. Same. Is it turned down over here, Haisa? Is the SCF turned down? Uh, no, I don't know. Is your overall volume down? No. I think you sound fine to me. Okay. Where's the cinematic view? All right, I'm hopping off for dinner. <laughs> oh, you want about to? 30 minutes. Well, we don't have to. I, this is what Gabby likes. I'm just. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can leave it. Do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. Looks like a, that's what I was. Well, no, we're on yeah. lunch. Yeah. Yeah. So they can. <laughs> <laughs> we're on lunch. I like it. I know. Okay, so we do what we'll we like. Zoom in on that panel, so if you want to. Or we can nice. we a little bit of time. Make up for the like half hour that we uh try to 
fix the situation ourselves from last watch. Again, the base of that one's discolored. Huh. Again? Yeah, there's like We're no like tissue over the base. Yeah. Is that a normal thing? I don't know. I I don't know if it's ju just that we've been calling it out and I've been noticing it more now. Right. I feel like usually I don't see that quite as much, but maybe I just haven't been aware. I smell research paper. <laughs> <laughs> Small sponge next to it looks like. Yeah, come wide, please. Or a stock, perhaps. I'm gonna get up ahead oh. here, a little close to. I can't believe our watch missed that Dumbo octopus. I know, right? Oh hour. man, no, it's not fair. Not at all. We don't get to do nothing. A Dumbo, <laughs> yeah, our watches have been so lame recently. Not at all. <laughs> no, our watches. I mean, it was fine. it's fine. We just saw like the most dense community of sponges and black corals oh, yeah. ever. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, when we first got here last night. Yeah. I was just talking to Rob about the rock so, so incredible. What the black corals? The black corals. This is gonna be our last yeah, chance to be down here. The cliff. <laughs> yeah. We're not gonna. Oh, you're right. you're yeah, we're, we're not recovering. here tonight. We're in yeah, the we're not, lab tonight. We're not even recovering. Okay. We're doing post eyes. Oh, sure. Wow, these are really tall, unbranching bamboos. Super tall and spirally. What was that thing next to the dead tree deploria on the right, just out that of frame? Looks I wonder. like a Chrysogorgia geniculata, a bottle brush. Uh, I'm just focusing on this guy. You can zoom in there if you want. And take a look at that after. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right, oh. going offline. Purple tree. Victor Gorgia. That's Beautiful. cool. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of those, but not really zooming in to appreciate them. I suppose they're usually pretty small colonies. Yeah, Could we take a look at the, um, cup just the black yep. coral? Zoom oh, there's out. a cup coral? Yep, on the right side. Well, Very now it's a little out of focus, one. but huh. yeah. Just where the laser, left of the lasers now. Oh, oh, there's another oh, one there. over oh, here, yes. far on there's the right. Here here. Yeah, if we could maybe a quick zoom on the one on the right, uh, just out of frame, since that's close by. Next to the interesting rock feature. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. That's a weird breakage. That is. Very angular. Looks like it happened recently, except it's crusted. <laughs> something there as well yeah, yeah, he's side. just trying to stabilize. Anemone, maybe? Oh, uh, you can zoom in, Panos. We're just gonna. Whoa! Well, if we spot have to hold it. several cup corals. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Hold on, we're getting there. Yep. Come on, here we come back. <laughs> uh, just out of reach. Is that not it? Is it still up? Oh, no, it's to the bottom. It's below. Is that it? Yep. Out of frame. There it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that <laughs> zoom is amazing. You zoom out and realize how far away we are. Yeah, it's not an essential zoom. We can keep going. Is it that thing right there? Yeah. Okay. Well, now that I know what we're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> I like how I'm like next to the interesting breakage, just agreeing. You're like, yeah, yeah, super oh, interesting. So I, I thought it's like not that far. <laughs> can you turn the down lights on, please? Yes. Oh, well, hi, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you changed. <laughs> you can zoom in there if you like. Oh, a little tube anemone. anemone. Oh. It's tiny. Yeah. Well, the cup coral is facing in a way that's not very helpful for diagnostics, yeah. so I can't <laughs> that's get down okay. There. We can keep going. <coughs> this is yeah. pretty though. Oh, okay. no, you're fine. We gotta get going. Yeah, I know they have it switched around. I guess Steve is the master of this image here. And if you don't want to mess up with... <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave setup, leave their yeah. setup. <laughs> these are good flybys of these bamboos. They have really um, 
They had interesting nodes. They were kind of irregular. Like it would be too close together and then one far apart. Okay. Coming down, coming below it. Yes, I'm lateraling. Yeah. Cool vax. And yeah, Steve was mentioning that this is the depth where you start seeing a lot of the yellow fans that are actually different but look similar. <laughs> and we definitely are seeing more of the yellow fans. This is wow big blocky features yeah. probably hard to oh. hand over <laughs> I didn't I didn't know you were there <laughs> okay Sorry, oh no that's okay you just startled me bye everybody bye see you later I just noticed that they don't say. That's not Ashley. Uh, I know, everybody's <laughs> different. Hi, Daddy. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Look at the surprise group of control banners. You saw the Dumbo octopus and were like, I want to get on yeah, all that. Like, let me up. <laughs> <laughs> Put me in the seat. The current watch was like, you're not getting in right now. <laughs> That's the first Dumbo octopus of the expedition, right? Yep. Um, yes. Was it? Was? Am I mixing up last one? Yeah, maybe it was at this expedition. A Doppler reset. Mm -hmm. It's nice to start fresh. Yes, there's still one. Uh, okay, which way are we moving? What are we going to do when we get there? Okay. 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 So we're s okay, and we're headed basically south along this sort of like slope that's a little bit shallower than the last one. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> and Adelante is on the move. Oh, it's, it has stopped. Okay. Wow, that's quite the vertical boulder. Yeah, mm -hmm. no kidding. I mean, Corallium, there's again, tons of those broken bases of who knows what, what was once growing there or how much of each of those things at the same time but looks like the left side has much more than the yeah right. than the right side. So I it's guess more probably is more exposed um, to the current. Yeah. Go for zoom. Little purple Ooh, coral. Oh, yeah, the tiniest Victor Gorgia. Gorgia. <laughs> it's so cute. Yeah, these are really nice. With closed polyps. You can count the polyps that they Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Go away. 
<laughs> we just had a, a viewer write in that they stepped away for a minute and missed the Dumbo octopus. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's bummer. how we feel. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll highlight it. Oh, and sorry, luckily Jason. you can rewind. <laughs> yeah. Got 12 hours of rewind capability. <laughs> <laughs> Is it 12? Did it change? I, oh. I thought it was four. Was it four? Can we do 12 now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm saying we should have the Maybe instant replays. Is it like a instant replay? Is that it wouldn't four that be a good feature? <laughs> Maddie, is it four hours? or? Okay, I was hoping you weren't going to ask me because I don't know the answer. <laughs> it always used to be four hours. I Maybe know because, still just four. <laughs> you know. I'm not sure where the 12 hours came from. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, though. I was optimistic. You can actually watch the entire dive. Look at this right. cool feature. Yeah, this is wild. Yeah, it is cool. Is this kind of isolated outside of the, away from the rest of the slope? It's a little pinnacle in Atalanta. Where are the geologists for this one? If you look in the in the Atalanta cam, it kind of almost looks like a like a turret or something. Like there's this like curved oh, yeah. wall. Yeah. Cool. Is it usual to see sort of all of these old remnants of? of coral and sponges on a rock like that? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty common okay. to see where things once were growing. This one has 30, hi so. Pardon? I said this one has 30. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a uh, big polyp. Okay, go on. Okay, um, so ship stopped. Yeah. Where Atalanta has stopped swinging, it looks like. Uh, we're going 190. Large black according hole? To, uh, uh, there's a black coral there. Okay. If that's uh, still Karen, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, I think we're ready to do that. Putting in a move. Yeah. How do we feel about a two zero meters move? Yeah, sounds great. Bridge now. Oh, wow. Two zero meters, one nine zero, please. Nice pair of marissas. Ooh, overhang. Yeah, Found. a little bit. Found it. I'm going to and move big back. Big oh, beautiful. From Noids. Ooh, oh, this nice. Aritagorgia. Aritagorgia. Ooh. Bella. Oh, wow. Yeah. So pretty. So in this shot, we can see so many different. This is very cool. Different yeah. kinds of corals kinds at of once. Corals, yeah. yeah. Niskin. Uh, was that interested in Niskin? Um, I don't. I don't know that we need to take one right here. We've took. We took one kind of recent. Sim in a similar spot too. Similar spot. I'll what let a, I'll let Steve decide okay. on his this is, when he comes uh, back. Did you Where want me to like line up the still cam? Oh, siphonophore in the in the Zeus there. Yeah. yeah just go for zoom. Sure. We haven't seen, we don't see many siphonophores down here on our dive. Oh, wow. Oh. Yep. Stay still. Pose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, another oh. jelly. Jelly. Yeah, yeah, like the one we saw the other day. Day. Teen or four of some sort. Okay, yeah. go on. Could see the teens for like a second. <laughs> the teens. <laughs> the teens. Huh. Yeah, this cool rock block. is uh this rock is really neat. Oh, yeah, I had a great okay, So we've got camp. that move is going. Sure is. Yeah. Okay, awesome. One nine zero. Several columns. Oh wow. Yeah, it's really Okay, we have someone do the work for us, and you can go back 12 hours. Oh! So, if you miss the Dumbo octopus, you have 12 which hours. Which was merely it. 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. 25 minutes ago, I would say. <laughs> so, this discussion really mattered for you. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get our facts straight.
Hello. So that move is wrapping up. Do we want to keep moving? Uh, yeah. We can also wait. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm game of science. Cool. Science yep. game. Bridge now. We can add another two zero meters to uh, one eight zero, please. Yeah, the terrain's really friendly. Howdy. Is that really the terrain talking? <laughs> yeah, it's really friendly. Yeah, it's the terrain <laughs> passing you by on a hike. <laughs> Wait, the train or the terrain? The train, the okay. terrain. <laughs> the train, the train. <laughs> okay. mm. Is there? Yeah, I feel like we can keep it moving for a while. Rad, rad. Is there anything fun right up above us? On this rock. Yeah, I'm slowly working my way up. It depends I on who you are. <laughs> <laughs> you like rocks. We got them. Yeah. Is Nick back yet? <laughs> <laughs> there we Yeah. What are you? Chrysogorgia, Paragorgia? A little. Is that your idea fun? <laughs> yeah, those are fun. A big dead sponge in the background. Oh, wow, yeah. Go for Zoom video. This one's going to have a little squab lobster in it. Zoom more. Yeah, you can see the little orange eyes. Is it always just one? Uh, sometimes there are multiple on the bigger ones, but it seems like there's always at least one. Okay, go wide. I'm gonna check out this big sponge. Yeah. Used to be some kind of large euplectelid, probably. Judging by the shape. Cool. You think Freyid, like the turbo, the turbocharger type shape? Okay, go on. It just seems like it had the really nice, um, like scaffolding, but hard to tell. All right, handing back over to Steve. Ciao. Have fun. All right, I guess I'm out of here too. Bye, Maddie. Bye, everyone. Thanks for letting me join. Ciao. Come anytime. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> there you hang out first. It's <laughs> a nice coral. Oh, anemone? Tucked in anemone? Yeah. Oh, neat. A little sponge. Like that? It's a whole cluster. That's like all the animals we've Oh, well. Wow. Oh, a big uh, anthemass is behind it, too. Ooh. Right. Yeah, yeah, Top yeah. Right oh, there's lots of good stuff here. Yeah. Good niche, niche nook. Niche, niche nook. Say that five times fast. I love that. <laughs> We're going for the anemone and the gold one right next to it. Sweet. And there's like a nice little sponge. I feel like we haven't seen very many of them closed up like this. Welcome back, Science. Thank you. Um, we are uh, moving up to the top of this little uh, knoll here. 
anything we'd like to do here? Uh, we're about to complete a ship move, or would you like to keep moving? Let's keep it moving. Keep yeah. moving. That's fine. Bridge, huh? Go away. There's some other good stuff. I was it? That uh, two yellow zero coral meters, was one eight zero. Colony of Acanthogorgia. Oh, there, yeah, there's the Anthemasis, and there's, there's a bunch yeah. of, what is this little thing? <gasps> oh, it's one of those weird lobsters. It's a weird lobster? Mm -hmm. yes. I love that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, go for zoom. Weird lobster. Yeah. Get ready. Oh, yeah. Poly Get ready for how weird? Polychelid. Oh, wow. That's very odd. Slipper lobster? Is that what the common name is? I think that's the common name. Slipper lobster. I'm writing weird lobster in the highlights, too. <laughs> it's very flat. Yeah. Not, not a squat lobster. Definitely a not. A weird lobster. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's in the family Polychelidae. For some reason, blind lobsters. Okay, go away. The way it has its legs tucked in reminds me of like how bats have their wings tucked in. I don't oh. know. It just okay, and the mastus, you have to wait for another time. Perfect. Sorry, buddy. On the move. All right, everyone. So I am back from dinner. It was delicious. Um, gonna try to see if I can catch up on the chat. A lot of whip corals in this area. Yeah. Go find a good one to float up. Uh, video, can oh. you push past the uh, yep. vignetting? Thanks. A little Victor Gorgia in there. Steve, yes. it sounds like you had the talk already with Lynette about um, kind of bypassing, well, we're about to bypass six, um, and just heading to seven along the gentler slope here. Is that still accurate? Raj. Go for zoom. Raj, Raj. We've got Anthemesis, we've got oh. something yellow. So it's a paramariciid octocoral. Go Actually, in, that's, going a little further. Yeah, if you can, it's really useful because its polyps are uh, all closed up. It's beautiful. As much as I got. So I'm familiar with this this morph. Okay, it's go away. Been collected elsewhere, um, and we've sequenced it actually. So uh, it's very distinctive knobby calyces. I don't know if this question was already answered oh, or not. It's gotten Feel free to cut me off if it has, if it has we're been. We're facing almost straight up now. That's pretty good. Um, uh, yeah, that's straight great. Up what? Straight up the slope. We're yep. going right mm -hmm. up the ridge, perfectly lined up. Great. Let's keep that then. One nine zero. Steve, you like going straight up the ridge there? Yep, that's fine. Okay. So the question was, are those sea stars on the coral? Uh, yeah, most of the time, I would say, yeah, a lot of the time we are able to see brittle stars that are hanging out on the coral and they're literally just hanging out. They're not eating the coral, they're not damaging it or anything. They're what we call associates. But in addition Go to brittle stars, excuse me, brittle stars, you can also see other types of associates as well. Sometimes they might be called commensals too. Commensals. Yep. Commensals are animals that don't necessarily derive a positive or negative um, symbiotic relationship from others. Or one animal might benefit slightly, and another might uh, either not benefit or would would uh, at least not be hurt okay, negatively. Go away. So it's like the brittle stars are benefiting, and the coral is just like eh, whatever. Bridge, yeah. Uh, I think the brittle star would, would be benefit. Yeah, the brittle star would be benefiting, but the coral. You know, there's some hypotheses that the coral might benefit <coughs> also because the action of the brittle star arms on the coral could potentially keep it free of mucus and debris. Whoa. So like uh, and parasites, things like that. So there must be some something really important, like really strongly conserved about this uh, relationship. Can we zoom on uh, this here? Yeah. Go 
go for zoom? Oh. Is it the lobster you wanted? Oh no, I, yeah, I, I was uh, look, planning on looking at both, but. Oh, okay. That's funny, the There's another lobster, squat lobster was a little bit more skittish than I imagined. The smaller one on the bottom there, on the right. Mm. Yeah, so this looks like a, it's a primnoid. Yeah, you know, with a bunch of zoanthids. Uh, those are the larger uh, video, yellow polyps. Are you polyps. full wide right now? Nope. Okay. Very far away. Go for zoom. what you're looking for, Steve? Yeah, just a, um, a brief brief in and out. Zoanthids. Yeah, zoanthids. I was hoping to get the, the two fur with the squat lobster, but... It, oh, there's another. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, there they are. Yeah. Oh, there oh. he is. That's oh. the one. That, that's all I right. I think. Three different species together. Oh, I've yeah. Oh, that, well, wow. They're just on the seafloor now. Can we zoom in closer? Yep. As much as I got. It's a very long arm. Ready to fight. Okay, go wide. All right. Sternostylus and Orgastroptychus. Thanks, Paola. That's, uh, that would be a genus I don't think we've hardly ever seen on this expedition wow. so far, so that would be a relatively new observation. Excellent. Oh, giant What's coral fan in the top right. Top right. Of the frame. <laughs> yes, <Mark>. gotcha. <laughs> giant coral fan. I'm it's a giant Steve. coral fan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a courtesy. Uh, that's all I got, I'll be quiet. <laughs> 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 Go for Zoom. You've been promoted. We'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Good raise. More yes. <laughs> okay, hold there. <clears throat> now, so this is uh, glass sponge debris, glass sponge rubble. I've noticed a lot of oh, this uh, rubble squatty. is very well colonized. Oh, yeah. So many squatties. By other animals. Oh, another squatty. Hydroids? Squatty squad. Hydroids <laughs> as well as you know, squat know. lobsters and zoanthids. Not dissimilar from what we've seen down deeper, so I wouldn't say anything's new there. The watch that Paul is on, is it the Squat Squad? Or, as Logan said, the Squatty Squad? Squatty Squad. <laughs> squatty. I like Squatty better. <laughs> it's more ridiculous. <laughs> Although, have they seen as many Squat Lobsters as we have? Because this was, we're at like six in the last 10 minutes, right? Yeah, that was crazy. They're up next, remember. <laughs> They're listening. <laughs> Start a tally. Okay, go for Zoom. Yeah, we have the squid count. We should get a squat count. Bridge, no? Yeah, so this is a bamboo Two zero coral. meters, one nine zero. And there's actually a bunch of uh, small uh, very, very small squat lobsters in that colony. All on live tissue, which could be useful. Uh, polyps are super dense. I think this is a node branching species, so that would tell us uh, maybe it's in the I or J clade. And that's about as far as I'm willing to go right now. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Time to go. We have, um, I'm hesitant to sample more bamboos only because um, we have sampled so many uh, over the past few years and so few of them are have been identified um, already and I know there's an extremely abundant amount of material uh, and that was a culling that was similar to one that had been sampled in previous years. But if we do find uh, bamboos, they're probably uh, probably more speciose than we appreciate at this point. 
uh, just because they have been so difficult to identify. Go for zoom. Another opt coral here. So this is a primnoid. Go ahead. Probably uh, tough to tell. Based on the branching pattern, I would suggest it's probably in the genus Norella, but wouldn't be able to be certain without polyp zoom, but we'll probably see more. Uh, push in just a little. It's a good rock. I agree. It's a great rock. Nick, what do you think? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. surprise. <laughs> hey, <Chase>. <laughs> <laughs> Can you look side by side, kind of in this area? Actually, um, hold there, hold that. Yeah. Delay that. Uh, can we look up at this white colony? That's something different. On okay. Top. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Oh, it was quite lobster. Oh. I'll try not to scare it this oh, time. Yeah, oh what? no, I scared it immediately. That's Sorry. very strange. Why are they bailing? But I still want to look at the coral. Like yeah, very bright and loud. Nice to it too. Normally, they're though they're not that scared. See if I can get a slightly better angle here. It tells you something though about the fidelity to their colony. As we get shallower, there tends to be a breakdown in the relationship between coral fidelity or coral host fidelity. Um, is that is it just easier to be a critter when it's shallower, and so you don't have to be so picky? Yeah, I think so. It might be. Yeah. Steve, is there any possibility you're going to want to sn snip this one? N uh, I I can't tell you, but probably not. Uh, go for zoom. Okay, there. Okay, yeah. So this is a hemichorallium. It might be a different species of hemichorallium than what we've seen so far, um, but I'll, I will won't sample this one. Okay, okay go away. The, all the polyps seem to be on the far side of the colony from where we are now, which could be an interesting um, characteristic we could use to identify it. We have some Girl Scouts that are wondering about the lasers. Yeah, so you might have noticed that we are using two laser beams. Pew-pew. Um, we use <laughs> the pew-pews, <laughs> lovingly known as. Um, yeah, so we are using those not to pew-pew things, but to <laughs> <laughs> measure them. We're trying to get an idea of how large uh, our whatever we're looking Another at basket is. basket star. So oh. they are 10 centimeters apart. Basket star on the basket dead coral. Star. Oh. Sorry, Brittany. You're good. Yeah, so 10 centimeters apart Go um, gives us an idea of how big or small what we're looking at is. Oh, that's so beautiful. Wow. Basket stars are so cool. They're really cool. I had a dive buddy once who was really afraid of them, though. Because they're nocturnal, right? I mean, I guess it's always nocturnal in the deep sea, but <laughs> True. Um, we went on a night dive and there was one like on the top of a really big rock just with all of its arms outstretched and it was mm. creepy, I oh, guess. Oh, amazing. <laughs> where I thought it was cool. Where were you? That was in the Bahamas. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Beauty, Logan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So using the lasers, that was what, 20, 30 centimeters across? 20? 10? 15? Uh, sorry, I wasn't paying no, attention okay. to the lasers. I was asking the science, okay. I was just looking at you. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> can we look there? Oh, yeah. Something Black coral or something? Dark, yeah, dark on the rock on down the downstream side. Go for 
Okay, uh, this is, uh, I'm pretty sure this is the Staropathies that we, uh, we sampled earlier. It's just a really big colony. Um, when you get a chance, bump down, tilt down a second. Okay. Oh, you want to see the associates? The associates, yeah. Uh, ship has stopped, by the way. Thank you. Oh, that's interesting. Um, any more zoom, or are we max? That's max. Um, okay. Let's, uh, uh, let's, let's pass on this one. Okay, oh. go away. What gave it, you pause? <laughs> uh, the, the associate looks a little bit different than some of the other Quick black corals the we've, we've seen, oh, yeah. but anemone? the difference is that, um, an anemone. What's that on the okay. top of coffee for you? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. Did you want to see something there? No, no. I'm just. I thought you were zooming on it. I wa Yeah, I was. Just because it was pretty. Huh. Uh, but if you want more, we can do more. Yeah, it's doing something cool. If okay, let's go look at it doing something cool. Yeah. yeah. What was it? Cool stuff. What's that, Gabby? I can't say it. There you go. <laughs> I just. I just can't. Anemone. Anemone. You got it. There we go. Got it. All right. Good. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Let's scram. It looks like it had just taken a meal or something. Tentacles were all crossed over the mouth. What's the ID for the yellow coral we're seeing? Um, multiple, actually. So we have uh, probably two species of paramercy, well, three species of paramercia here. Um, two uh, paramercia alike, and then one acanthogorgia. Uh, makes it more complicated, not that they've been revised into the same family, we can't say they're, dif they're different families, so, so we'll have to just take a closer look at them to better Go discern zoom. them. Anemone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, their placement is usually associated with the loss of tissue along most of these colonies, which suggests that it's possibly inhibiting um, kind of a, the, the communication between, say, the polyps on the bottom and the polyps on the top. Normally the senin kind, which is the tissue that connects Go all ahead. the polyps, provides a mechanism for resource um, resource transfer, say, from one part of the colony to the other, but if you have a predator, not a predator, but a parasite mm -hmm. uh, attached to your colony that's uh, taking up real estate, it might prohibit you from, uh, from communicating with other polyps in your colony, and then you end up in with two colonies that are growing independently of each other on the same stock. We definitely found where that drops off. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, off to the left there. Okay, ready for another move? Yeah. Bridge, no? Um, do we, uh, are we moving closer to that? Uh, Standby bridge. Let's see, if we're moving closer to that, What's that? The ledge? The ledge? Or yeah. are we, do you think we're just moving along it? Uh, we're moving along it. Okay, yeah. let's do it. We can okay. aim to not fall off it. Let's not fall off it. We'll, I'm we'll sure do we'll recover. We yeah. Bridge now. Uh, let's do two zero meters, one nine zero, please. There's a good amount of particulate matter in the water column here. I would say more than when we were a Go bit deeper zoom. on the steeps. Um, so that could be a, a reason that there's some uh, higher densities of animals right in this immediate area as mushroom coral and the Okay, go on. So our viewers have noticed we've been seeing a lot of squat lobsters um, and they're wondering what is the difference between a lobster and a crab? Are they different families? Uh, yeah different groups. Uh, they're, they're all decapods, they're all crustaceans, um, but there's some divergence. Uh, so the, the squat lobsters are more closely related to things like hermit crabs, and the, the true lobsters are in a more distant family. Go 
up with him. So there's a prim no, mode in the background, Victor Gorgia down below, and a pair of Mercia in front. I see a fish. Channel three. So now for oh, yeah. it. Yep. Cutthroat eel. Nice. Oh, there oh it goes. God. Anybody online is wondering how cold the water is? It is about three degrees Celsius. Our next move can be more. Two south. Uh, more. What was our last move? One nine zero. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, it can be oh. closer to two hundred even. Oh, interesting. Uh, see, so yeah, like yeah. So if I face one eight zero, I'm facing. That's the drop off there. Oh, okay. And okay. like I want to go that way. In my heart of hearts. Yeah. Go. That way. This way, which is yep. like, which is about two, 200. Perfect. Roger. Let's do that. That's what my heart's saying. Well, I think you should follow your heart. <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll follow your heart. You're the navigator. <laughs> I can offer suggestions. <laughs> Let's follow Steve's heart. <laughs> Let's follow Steve's heart. There we go. Yeah. No, just my heart says waypoint seven. <laughs> <laughs> Where's waypoint seven? It's, uh, oh, yeah, there, okay, great. Pretty much 200. It's a very logical can heart. We, can we look, uh, <laughs> just zoom in here surprised. in the top of this rock? Science. Yes, we can. Okay, go for zoom. Oh, is there a Holotherian, like a very spiky one, off to the right there? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's just, it's an anemone. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah thanks. That. Yeah. <laughs> That's an anemone <laughs> to the bottom right. Is this what you oh, wanted no, to see here? Uh, yeah, what are you, looking do you, for? you have any more zoom? Yeah, I'm we just can looking go, to see why, why there's such just a little sediment on top. Uh, do you want to, can you circle which top you want me to look at here? The one without sediment. Okay. Oh, cool. Pretty shiny. Okay. Shiny. Sometimes, shiny. yeah. Sometimes. Lustrous. Lustrous. Sometimes. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sometimes when you see odd patches with no sediment on the seafloor, there may be deposit feeders uh, that scour and rasp at the seafloor, and and that's how they get their nutrition. So if you see um, oddly discolored or darker splotches, uh, sometimes that can indicate feeding traces. Hmm. Ship has stopped. Uh, there's another big group of anthomastis. I don't think I've ever seen so many large groupings of anthomastis before. They're usually so solitary. Did you see the one on the last watch? Yeah, no, that's yeah. what I mean. Like, oh wait, last watch or last? Last watch, there was a boulder on the big overhang that had about hundred colonies. Whoa, more than so more than what we saw. Oh, it's crazy. That's I've never seen more than just a few at a time. That's so interesting. What do you have any guesses on what's going on? With the anthomastis? Yeah. Um, anthomastis, I, I believe, are brooders, uh, so they don't have a very large dispersal kernel. Mm. And so what that means is that you have a large number of settlement events nearby uh, where they're fertilized and uh, fewer further away. But have you ever seen that concentration of them anywhere else? On the rock that yeah. the last watch saw? No, no I mean... Uh, Anywhere else in the Pacific, have you ever seen that large of a concentration? Yeah, sometimes. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> well. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I can't recall exactly where, um, but I mean, anthomastis. Yeah, it's it's locally abundant. Uh, you know, for that reason, it's it's a short dispersal species. Okay. So that's why we call it patchiness uh, in ecology terms.
is a good example of how one person's yeah. meh is another person's wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Karen, hello. Yes, hello, hi. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you in the Herxie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we uh, will be moving two zero zero when you're ready. Yeah, I'm happy. Perfect. Is Gabby happy? I'm so happy. Okay. We're happy. I can be happy more loudly. Yeah, I'm really happy. <laughs> happy and following our hearts. Yeah. Bridge now. <laughs> two zero meters. Uh, two zero zero, please. Is there any way we, uh, yeah. no, never mind. Rock what? collection? No, 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 no collection. <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> What's the anyway? Uh, can we come like one meter lower or half a meter lower? Yeah, absolutely. The sea floor? What do you want to look at specifically? No, I just, I'm trying to pick out some of the smaller things and it's a little harder to see. Yeah, for sure. Four and a half meters up. Just scanning, not not in anything in particular. Okay. Uh, although, as we approach this colony in the background, it would be nice to get a nice zoom on that. In case anyone is wondering out there, we've gone 200 meters since our last rock collection. That's a that's a lot of meters. That's good. How, yeah. How, how I'm just kind of curiosity. How long ago was that in time? We have a time on that. Go for yeah. zoom. Stand by. That was 250. 250? Yep. UTC? UTC. UTC. Our last rock collection was at 250 UTC? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, that was a long time ago. Sure was. Yeah. I wonder how to resolve that. <laughs> huh. <laughs> if only we knew. Well, I, I've been told that... Um, the geological um, flows and structures up here are pretty similar to what we were seeing down lower, ah. and that we're trying to reserve some capacity for the crater at the end of the dive track. Roger. But it doesn't mean we can't take rocks, we just need to be judicious. Are we happy here, Steve? Yeah. That looks good. It's yeah. the same kind of thing. It's this uh, same primnoid with the zoanthids. Um, second colony like this we've seen. And then always on the dead part, you, you get this uh, Sternostylus gastroptychus species. So that suggests it's probably not a specialist. It's a generalist. And it's how it associates itself with its animals, hosts. Oh, uh, there is a, if we're lingering, uh, right at the bottom. Yeah. I just saw that. There's a, a bottle brush uh, Chrysogorgia colony right here. Okay. And we just want to get a zoom on. Cool. Good for zoom. Somebody's asking how many shrimp ago was the rock collection. <laughs> it was about three shrimp ago, I think. <laughs> so two, two. I love that that's our meter of time. <laughs> yeah. So that's a little bit over, when we said that 200 meters, it was a little bit over an hour. So that puts us just shy of 200 meters per hour-ish, round numbers, uh, which suggests that we probably won't finish the dive track if we move at this pace. Um, by 2300. I'm just doing some mental math for myself. <laughs> we thought you were doing mental math on the shrimp count. No. I no. know. I said it was two shrimp. Goodness. 
<laughs> I hope this data is getting recorded somewhere. I haven't been. I should write it down at the end of the watch where the shrimp count is. Oh uh, no, don't. <laughs> See who's being the most observant. Yeah. I think it's all just a. Yeah. It's a. Hey. On the descent, though, you have to be a little bit more more careful because sometimes there's euphausians and and other things that look shrimp-like that are not shrimps. Um, or amphipods that you know. Yikes. Are definitely not shrimps. So you're saying our count might be off. That's a problem. Saying all your shrimp might not be shrimp. Oh no. It's tough to tell though. I mean, on the descent especially. Uh, like crabs, there's a lot of things that look shrimp-like uh, over their uh, evolution. I'll have to okay, so Steve, it sounds like just keep moving. Yeah, let's roll it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Um, well I think we good. needed, we need, uh, by my calculation, from waypoint six before dinner, we needed to do like 350 meters an hour. Uh, oh yeah, we didn't do that. To finish by 2300. Do you, I mean, do we want to like, do a pickup and tow? Is it no, 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 no. Let's, just, let's keep okay. going as is and uh, await further instructions. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> Who are the instructions coming from? <laughs> you asked too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were following Steve's heart. <laughs> we, well, we're, we're going. Nick, how would we describe the uh, topography of the rocks here? Uh, this is definitely pillow basalt. If we have a lot of time, since we're really stretched out, can we look down here in the lower left? Uh, yeah. We just passed a colony. Uh, and I'm, I'm curious, because I've seen this a few times, this one right here. Uh, if we get a really tight zoom yep. on some of the polyps there. Yeah. This is in the genus Calyptrophora, and I just, sometimes you can tell some features by looking tightly at the polyps. Um, but this is this was the one I don't know if anyone saw that um, had a really big colony in the steepest place. We took our second Niskin bottle there uh, off the wall a, a little while ago. Go for zoom. So this particular species only has lyrate branching, which really narrows it down quite a bit. You'll notice that the branches don't don't dichotomously branch; they just grow upwards. This candelabra shape. So Is that the current? Yeah, is that yeah. the current that's causing? Yeah. It's a bit of current. Okay. I can tell from the branch tips, yeah. Yeah. We have some viewers that are impressed with the quality of images that we're getting from the deep sea. Um, so they have some questions about lighting how strong are the lights, how many lights are there, and maybe if anybody can say a bit about what kinds of cameras are we using. Um, <laughs> so, okay, let me see. We've got, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look up the, the lumens real quick. I don't know off the top of my head, but I can tell okay, you for sure, you? I, I can tell you for sure we've got like tens of thousands of lumens on the vehicle, worth of lights, um, or lights. Lights come from deep sea power and light. They're little LED lights. Um, I don't, know. let's see, we have one, two, three, four, zoom? five light banks with between two and four lights on That's all I've got. That's full zoom, okay. Um, let's see, four, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah. Uh, all right. At least 50. Shall lights. I get closer? Um, Is that enough? No, that's all right. Yeah. Bridge. Let's, no. let's not get behind. Three zero meters, uh, two zero zero. So let's say we have like 15 lights on Herc. Um, 15 of these little LED lights. Um, at a, I don't know, a few thousand lumens each. Uh, and the cameras, they're, I think, what did we count? Nine or eleven cameras? I'm losing track already. Yeah, nine. Already? It was uh, it was nine. Yeah. Um, Since we're on Cyclops, not Triclops. Okay. Uh, 
and um, the one that's going out, actually two of them are going out. One of them is a, a Zeus Plus camera made by Insight Pacific, which is like a, is a camera specifically um, packaged for the deep sea, made by a company who does specifically that. Um, we've been using that camera for 20 years and a number of other I science vehicles. I put the species name too. for that large fan in the chat. Um, but that camera is like a three chip style camera. So you've got one, one sensor for each color, which helps you get these like very, very crisp images with these beautiful vivid colors. Go ahead. Thanks. Crisp and beautiful indeed. Thank you, Gabby. I'd have to do some research to get you the number of lumens we have total, but uh, deep sea power and light is where is where we get these these LED lights from. They're like n they're not your average oh. flashlight. Yeah. Do I spot a squatty? Yeah, let's take a look at that it's smaller one. Squatty. Go for zoom. the sea cucumber in the back. Yeah, this is our uh, squat lobster friend, uh, Munidopsis, that likes to live on dead things. Sorry. Hmm. We're going to want to keep nice. moving. Okay, okay. Yep. go wide, there. please. Thank you. You've got the ship still moving, right? Ship's moving. Sweet. I was told by Steve to keep moving and await instructions. Keep moving. And not Sweet. ask questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, I've still got a heading on Atalanta that matches uh, a sort of a 200 zero zero move. 200, zero zero. okay. Thanks. 200. Zero zero. Hi, Karen. Good of you to join us. Friend of mine from the California Science Center. So again, for our viewers online, if you would like to uh, submit questions or comments or anything like that, uh, feel free to do so. We do have a chat box that is open below the video feed. If you're watching on a browser or if you're on your phone, it might be to this side. No, they're always below. Yeah, so we have a chat box below if you want to send something over, I'll do my best to address it. <laughs> no, it would be really helpful to me if we could ca have a coral count. I don't uh, know. Mm. No, I don't know about that one. <laughs> no? Okay. Nah. No. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a busy job. I'll, I'll pay you in candy. I don't know about now. <laughs> I don't know. You do those make gummies? Make I know chocolate those gummies. And you have a deal. Mm. Yeah. What have you got? <laughs> All right. Uh, we can do chocolate. We'll just cut it in very small pieces. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably for the best. Oh, or if you had Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> was, it, was it about this big, Steve? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like an inch square of chocolate. <laughs> yep. Yes, yes. <laughs> Are you paying for per coral? Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> per coral polyp? Yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the cheapest uh, cryptocurrency on the market these days? <laughs> That's a great question. You know, my mom might know the answer to that. She's like really into stocks and all that stuff. Let's we'll see if she answers in the chat. <laughs> Be on standby. What's that little yellow? Oh, it's cool. Yeah, something floating. It's, let's do a snap zoom on that. Okay. I think it's oh, probably a zoom. black coral. Nice sponge. Oh, it looks like a small Staropathy's yellow colony. All right. I think we're okay there. Just curious yeah. if it was something else. Bridge nav. Uh, let's do another three.